mono merori wa chemi media githi na bere kwera za maria marathi na bere kubuka guko ne daini thutha wa gikuo kia bishop alan kiuna go korogi gitaka do mudenya wa omothe hwaini riu a video ni sidiete na bere na go trend kana go korogo sike yumeria na oni thutha wa do korogo makirekereria video sia mutumia wake akeria korogo go kanitha ini that is jubilee charge na ga korogo kehea na dumiriri ya muthuri wake uria ai korogo akimwira oroho kairetu gake that is kuna's daughter ni akoriro ake wish fafa wao domereri ya fathers day re akoriro ikihutia adu ike na jira nene kanitha amroreri go gutigana video isi na dokarigana ne ko like no subscribe na go share video eno The other day I said to him, what do you want me to tell your children? And he said, tell them. The JCC organization is going very far. And he said, tell them it's going to be very, very big. And he said, tell them, God is giving us a very huge assignment and none of them should be intimidated by the assignment. That's what he sent me to tell his sons and daughters in the house. What an amazing man. What a mighty man of valor. Words, the best person to have said it was Vanessa. You know? And we can't even scratch the surface of who Bishop is. He is the most generous human being I have come across. And I've told you before that my biological father was such a chronic giver. Chronic. But I have met one who is even greater than my own biological father. Bishop will give you anything and leave himself with nothing. He's such a generous soul. All the pastors in the house, all their kids are educated by Bishop. Not only that, he has educated thousands upon thousands of people that he doesn't even know. We meet people all over the world, all over, and I mean everywhere in the world that we go to. And people come to him and say, Bishop, do you know that you educated me? He's like, really? Like he has educated thousands upon thousands of people that don't e he doesn't even get to meet. Because he's very, very key on education. He loves with such a passion that I can't even begin to describe. That's why everybody writes to me and tells me, oh my God, you're so loved. I am. Like it's for real. And his kids, and the best gift today was that Jeremy arrived this morning. So... So that's, that, that's the best father's gift because dad and Jay are, are just something else. And so I really, really thank God. Would you just, just for me, father's gift because dad and Jay are, are just something else. And so I really, really thank God. Would you just, just for me, just for me, this is for me. Just put your hands together for Bishop. <laughs> Honey, we love you. Thank you for being selfless. Thank you for standing and showing us what a soldier looks like in the army of the Lord. That no matter the battles you've had to encounter, you're still going at it with a straight face and letting us know that Jesus reigns. Every day you say that God is faithful. It's not a day that ends without Bishop saying, God is faithful. No matter where he is at in life, he'll rise up and say, God is faithful. He has taught us who God is and what it looks like to go through so much and still acknowledge that there is no God like our God. Things about your father. Wow. 
Well, mom is very lucky that the topic is dad, because dad, <laughs> I will comfortably talk about always. It, it, it's hard to describe dad in a few words. I've tried. I don't know if I've done it successfully. Um, but dad is the one who was the first person to show me what a real husband and, and father looks like. He was the blueprint that enabled this guy right here to, <laughs> to be the right one. He, he showed me love and faith and belief um, that is unexplainable. Let me explain. I, I wanted to be a scientist when I was really young, but I hated science. And then I wanted to be a lawyer. And dad, the minute I said that, took every interest in my path, every. Like I'm talking, any jurisdiction that came up, we discussed, anything politics we discussed, dad took my interest on as his own. And when I had doubts um, in faith and everything, dad never told me how, how? I've raised you in this house, how can you question? No, dad met me at my place and answered. Dad is the reason I have the faith I have today. Um, <laughs> Watching dad go through everything, I, I, he, it's not even humanly possible what my dad experiences, but how he comes out of it. D dad is walking faith. I, I, I know I've used the word faith a million times, but I have no better way to explain my father. And dad is the embodiment of love. And if God tells us that being Christ-like is love, and, and that's how you show Christ, then dad, you've done it a million times over. I love you. And it's not, I don't even know if there's a bigger word than love that can describe who you are in my life. And I honor you and, and I hope when I grow up, I can have even an ounce of the wisdom, grace, faith, and courage that you have. And I'm honored to learn from you every day, even today. And I'm so grateful that God made you my dad. The sons I have raised all over the world. How did that happen? Not by ability, but grace. Because where strength fails, grace takes over. But for grace to take over, you must pinpoint and say, this right here is the area of my dysfunction now you know one thing that is unique about me is that i tell you about my life most preachers behave like they're superstars and supermen no me i tell you my life because i have nothing to hide and everything that i've been through can help somebody i i, I that's why i'm naked i'm not telling you this because you know i'm just telling you because i know somebody needs to hear this i want to be real I want to be real. And also what you now need to do is to go before God and really be real. And being real doesn't mean that you do stupid stuff. Because there are people who confuse being real with doing a lot of nonsense and being authentic. No, you're just being foolish. Some authenticity is foolishness. The only authenticity that is required is when you can go before God. Not trying to make an impression to men. Some of, some of the people are saying, I'm being real. You're just trying to make an impression to men. The real place to go where you want to be real is at the foot of the cross and telling God, God, I am broken inside. I am broken. I am broken inside, Lord. I am really broken. And this brokenness comes from here. Fix it, Lord. Send grace. Grace will hold you by the hand. I promise you. He will start to lead you to places. And some of you, you are here because grace led you here. And you've been observing Pastor Kathy and I. And the reason why you've been observing us is because the same areas that we have overcome is the same area that God is dealing with you in your life. So that when he comes or when she comes, you can be able to walk together into the fullness of everything that God has. Grace. Some of you that have been broke, you've lived in poverty. And if there is an anointing, if there is grace that is available in this house is grace for prosperity. But you see, if you don't deal with the dysfunction of poverty, 
Because poverty also destroys you on the inside. Do you know how it does? Poverty actually makes you become a miser. So that even when you get, you can't give. You see, prosperity is not how much you get. Prosperity is how much you give. Because God is not interested in getting it to you only. He wants to get it through you. So if you can't take money and build for Mama Wino, you are not prospering. If you cannot take money and be a blessing to somebody else, like I tell you, for me, my area is education. People come to me, tell me they will need to go to school. I write checks like crazy. I want to be a blessing. That's why I'm blessed. But if you, if you don't deal with that dysfunction, what it does is you think that you're supposed to hold. And you know what the Bible says? There's he that withholds more than his meat. And it was, it tenders to poverty. But there is he that releases and increases. There is he. So, so that is a dysfunction. That is a dysfunction. It's a dysfunction to think that, and it's amazing. Stay with me. Hey, but listen, imagine this with me. Look at our politicians. Just look at our politicians, Pastor Nick. Our politicians, some of them have so much money that they, their children, and their children's children will never finish it. But they are still stealing. They are stealing. They will steal money for drugs. They will steal money. I mean, this country. And you look at them and like, I thought you owned the whole country in terms of money. What is that? It's a spirit of poverty. Because poverty is not about what you have in the account. Poverty is an internal mechanism. You are so broken on the inside that you think, that's why Jesus said, be careful. Life does not consist because covetousness is the attitude that makes you think that the more you have, the more you are wonderful. And, the, and that is an area that needs to be dealt with. That's our politicians. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's like, this is ridiculous. When does it become enough? When does it become enough? You have, you have so much, but you're still stealing. People are getting poorer, yet you are, you, you, you are taking even the little that they have. Why? Because in, internally, they are broken. By the way, that's a problem. Broken on the inside. Completely broken. Broken on the inside. But you are going to get fixed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Pastor D, today we are going to finish with prayer. And listen to me. Oh, Jesus. I, I, I am not here to condemn anyone or to make you feel bad. Or if I have, if I have touched you, or what I've said has touched you, or there's something that has really made you look within, it is not me. It is the Holy Spirit. So don't look at me and wonder, okay, Bishop, what, why did you say that? It's nothing to do with you. Or it's nothing to do with you. I know your story. I, I'll be honest with you. I have never stood in this pulpit for 20 years to try and sort somebody out. I have never done it and I will never do it. To take this pulpit to sort people out so I know Pastor D has an issue so I stand here to sort him out. If if he has an issue, I'll call him to my office, sort him in my office, we get out of the office, come out smiling. So, I'm saying that to say, I didn't come here so that I can sort you out. I came here to preach the word of God. People have been watching us. I know millions have watched us today. I cannot be sorting you and millions are watching us, including all the thousands that are here. So, I want to make that very clear. So, if anything has been said here that has touched you, I want to know, to know, that the Holy Spirit has been on your case because there is a work that he wants to do in your life. And I want to declare this. You shall not repeat the mistakes of your parents. I said you shall not repeat the mistakes of your parents. I wish I could get a few amens in Jesus' name. I said I wish I could get a few amens in Jesus' name. I want to decree you shall not repeat the failures of your father. You shall not repeat the failures of your mother. You shall not repeat the failures of your grandfather. You shall not repeat the failures of your tribe. Somebody shout amen. I decree and declare that by the grace of God, it shall be different with you. Ah, oh, say a better amen. I say say a better amen. Amen means so shall it be, it cannot be otherwise. 
Shout a better amen. amen. We are going to stand and pray for the next five minutes. And this is how we're going to pray. Lord, this is my area of dysfunction. Pour your grace today. And I want to believe that by the time we leave this place, our work would have started. And I want to announce, it shall be different with you. Say a better amen. I said it shall be different with you. I said it shall be different with you.